Welcome back to Columbus, Ohio for the second stop of the 2011 MLG Pro Circuit. It is time for the match that everyone in the venue is calling the match of the week in Columbus. Let me hear some noise for Instinct versus Straight Rippin. The God Squad taking on the only team to really put up a fight during our last land here, guys. This one is being talked about all around the venue. What are you expecting to see? Well, this might as well be the winner's bracket finals match, if not the finals match. I can't believe it's finally here. I'm expecting a five game. I hope Straight Rippin doesn't lay down and fall faithful to the train that is final ball or instinct. Well, There's one already. If all, if, all the, <laughs> if all the games today and, and uh, yesterday are, you know, serve as they tell us what's going on, it's going to go to game five, essentially. It's going to be great. This hopefully, we all want to see it go to game five. We want to see an exciting match, 50-49. I'm excited to watch these two powerhouse teams play. Instinct is on a roll right now, but straight ripping, they've only dropped one game. But guys, before we get to straight ripping, we gotta meet our red squad. Let's meet our number six seed, Instinct. Roy and Lunchbox, probably the best duo players who have been playing together since 2007. Ogre 2, the winningest player in Halo history. Pistola is absolutely disgusting. He's going to be going off constantly during this tournament. If you have a decent on at least Jason, he's going to get Every time we watch his final boss, I'm really switch between like victory and victory. Oh. Legs down bottom middle, sniper in the hand. Roy here, it's time for him to shine. Roy, he has not stopped being the concert with the top team. Roy picking up huge shots right now. I expect this team to start heating up. Roy. Royal Launchbox is still the core of this team, but they have some new faces. They know how to handle the pressure. They're ready to go. Talking to the merch guys, they said shirts are flying off the shelves for this Instinct squad. Definitely the fan favorites in the venue. And it looks like down on the floor, we have Julie Alexandra, who is down with Launchbox. Thanks, Chris. Three three O's in a row. Nine games. You guys have not dropped a series here in Columbus. You have not dropped a series online. What do you attribute your success to this far? Uh, well, we practiced a lot online, and we gained a lot of confidence, especially last LAN. Um, we were able to go um, undefeated through the LAN, and we've continued that streak through this tournament so far. So um, we're just looking to come out strong and um, stay confident and hopefully take the win. Well, whatever it is, it's certainly working for you guys. Now, I have a couple questions from the Twitter community. This one comes from at MLG Irvin, and he asks, how confident do you feel with your team for future MLG events? Um, well, there's no reason to be not confident right now. We haven't lost yet um, on land, so uh, we're going to try and continue that streak. We are you know, practicing a lot and really putting in the time, so it's paid off so far. Absolutely. It certainly shows. And this Twitter question is from Traden22, who asks, how do you like the name God Squad, and what do you guys hope to accomplish? Um, I mean, in the end, it's just a name. Uh, the forums kind of gave it to us after we formed, so... Um, whether we're deserving of it or not, I don't know, hopefully we can prove it at this event that we're, we're, we're a good team. Do you feel any added pressure, though? I mean, God Squad is a pretty intense name. Um, I don't think so. I think to all of us, it's really just a name, and, you know, the meaning behind it is just, you know, through the forums and talk. So, um, you know, we're just looking to come in like we do every single tournament to win. So, you know, we're going to try our best just like we would at any other one. All right. Keep on doing what you're doing. It's certainly working. Chris, back to you. Thanks, Julie. So Instinct going undefeated so far this weekend, not dropping a single game. And boy, did these guys look impressive last night. Yeah, it was pretty much the most impressive three games, the five-minute CTF Warlock game, one of the best. But let's not count out the straight ripping team already. I mean, they did beat Believe the Hype 3-1. to one. We've yet to see them on the main stage. I'm not sure what to expect from them. Yeah, but you've got Pistola, Roy, two of the best players, if not the two best players in the game. 
flanked by Lunchbox. I know a player in your top five, Pocket, and you've got Ogre too. I mean, this team is stacked right now. They're looking to do some damage, and I know they want to keep their streak going. Well, they're going up against arguably the toughest team in Pool C. That is the Pool of Death this weekend. Let's check out our team wearing blue tonight. It's straight ripping. They are back for this event. Nated, legit, and T-squared for the first time since 2007. Let's take a look at their roster. And they're joined by the new member here. They pick up a really good noob. And guys, we were super impressed by these people at the land. And, you know, Julia's on the floor with the guy who's really stepped up his game the most since we saw him in Dallas. Julie, what's going on with Legit? First of all, I just want to let everybody know it's his 21st birthday today. Let's give him a round of applause. Big day for you, Legit. 21st birthday. Congratulations. Any birthday wishes? Uh, to win this tournament. All right, that sounds good. Now, you know, Chris Puckett mentioned earlier to me personally, he said that you're going back to beast mode. Confirm or deny? Uh, I guess that's a, con a confirmation. I mean, we'll have to see. All right, all right. Now, I opened up these questions to the Twitter community, and uh, this one comes from at Astreos. Astreos wants to know, how does it feel to be back on straight? Uh, it's a great feeling. Never thought I would be back on it after the leave in 2010, but, you know, I feel comfortable on this team, and things are going good. And this one comes from Get Affinity. I believe, get B Affinity, and says, being the only team to have given uh, success against Instinct, uh, how do you feel coming into this competition? Um, extremely confident. You know, they're definitely one of the best teams out there, and we gave them a run for their money at the last LAN Network tournament, and we know we can do the same thing here. Do they have any weaknesses that you plan on preying on? Uh, yeah, we have to just be aggressive, don't let them get on our side, and you know, keep the aggressive level high and don't ever let them, you know, get confidence and, you know, let them roll or get them rolling. So. And one question that was unanimously across the, uh, the Twitterverse that everyone was asking was, what happened to the America bandana? Oh, my God. Um, you know, it's just resting in my room right now. It's got to, it, it'll come out soon. We just got to wait for the right time. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay, because a lot of people on Twitter were asking about it, just so you know. All right, guys, good luck in the competition. Chris Bucket, we'll see you in a minute. Thanks, Julie. Legit keeping his answers short and sweet. He seems to just be focused on this match coming up here. Guys, I know all three of us were watching them land against Instinct. What were the strengths that we saw from Straight Ripon when they were performing against Instinct during that finals match? Well, just what he was saying, they're extremely aggressive, and I think that's going to catch a lot of teams off guard. And if Instinct doesn't get rolling off the beginning and, Inst or, and Straight Ripon's extremely aggressive, I think they can start off to an early lead. I just love the team right now. You've got Legit, he's back on the main stage where I know he loves to play. Nated, T-squared, and then their newest addition, Ryan Noob. I love the way Ryan Noob plays. I think a lot of players out there don't really know him, don't really know exactly how he plays. The guy's an objective mastermind. I just love watching him play. I totally agree with you. He is my favorite player to watch on that straight ripping squad. Guys, it is the time. You have all been waiting for Instinct is taking on Straight Rippin' and we are getting into game number one right now. Capture the flag on Sanctuary. There's that Columbus crowd we've been waiting for. All right, so here we go. We are starting it off with Legit. I said it earlier, he is back in beast mode, guys. He looked a little sloppy in Dallas, a bit shaky at the land, but so far this tournament, Legit has been playing lights out. His DMR is on fire, and he really looks like the Legit we saw back with Straight Rip and had so much success back in 2008. And I have to agree with you, Chris. It's just because he's finally comfortable. When you're back with Nated and a player like T-Squared, one, your confidence is going to go through the roof, and two, your dedication level is going to be put to that next level. Legit working down low. Brett Robert has that sniper that is nated for Straight Ripon. He's taking all kinds of fire, but you see Straight Ripon doing a nice job protecting him. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have all four members of Instinct Alive. Pistola has those rockets, and it looks like Roy has the sniper here for Instinct. 
And remember, keep this FB tally going. I believe we're at three and a half mentions here on accident. I'm gonna do my best to avoid it. Here we go, we got Legit going off and Ring 2 picks up the double, wasn't able to get out of there. T-squared was able to pick up the Rockets for straight and Naded still controlling that sniper, Scott. And a great job right there by Straight Rip and they got control of Ring. Naded's in the top of the ring watching the Rocks with the sniper. Really good noob is pushed into the sniper hut. They're in a perfect position to get a flag pull. And I love the makeup of this straight team. I was talking about it. In my mind, this is one of the only teams that's built well enough to be able to challenge this instinct team when it comes to the terms of firepower. You've got legit and nated, especially now that legit, you said, going beast mode. He had used to have one of the best battle rifles in the league in the past day. I think his DMR is starting to get to that point. He squared on your screen. He had the Rockets earlier. Thought he was safe to push in for a flag, and he was cut off by, I thought it was Lunchbox. But right now, you see Straight Rippin taking it to Instinct. T2, the last member alive, but he's actually on the Instinct side of the map, and he's going to try and stay alive long enough to steal this sniper. Even if he wasted a shot there, that play was good. But right before then, T Square, notice how he didn't shoot the guy at the P shooter going into the ring. He called him out and they cleaned up the one shot. Those are the plays you want to do because if one shots start getting away, then your team's going to fall apart. Yeah, but this has got to be scary for straight ripping right here. Instinct starting to get in their base. And you've got Pistola patrolling the ring with a sniper rifle. If he catches fire, this is almost a guaranteed catch. Flag is out here. Instinct is going to pull it straight, rip it, playing a bit of defense. Looks like T Squared pushing into the Instinct bonfire. Nice shot connected with Ogre 2's brain. It's going to take him down. Meanwhile, Ryan New picking up a nice assassination, hitting the flag carrier with a grenade, now going for a counter cap. I love this play out of straight, rip it, and he got Nathan with the sniper over in courtyard. They have potential to get a cap here if they can slay off the spawn. And Great spawns right there by Instinct. Managing to spawn right up top, right next to Nathan and it just basically kind of canceling him out, and now they've got control of their base back. T-squared grabbing those rockets, but he's taken out instantly. Ogre 2 has the rockets now here for Instinct, and it looks like he's going to do some spawn slaying before Ryan New could even move. Ogre 2 didn't even see him, but listened perfectly to the call out. Shot a blind rocket, taking out a player and injuring another one, but T-squared is going to spawn over on the opposite side of the map, but four down for straight, and Roy is going to be pushing the flag once again with Pistol controlling those power weapons. I'm not sure why T-Squared just decided to charge there. Maybe it had something to do with spawns, but it looks like final boss, or number four. Instinct's running this flag very effectively. Don't want to get the Scott. It's killing it's me. It's happening to everyone this week, and it's okay. Ogre 2 continuing to push that flag back to the Instinct side of the map. Pistola and Launchbox trying to swarm on it. It looks like Roy is going to be the player to actually pick it up. He's taking it back through his rock ramp. Is anyone in from Straight Ripping in position? I don't believe so. They're going to be the first ones on the board here. And we are staying on board with T2. It's going to grab another sniper for Straight Ripping. And notice how Straight Ripping right there worried about killing Lunchbox first because he knew if he didn't get the guy out of his base, they would have a thorn in their side the entire time. Great play by Straight Ripping, even though they're just getting slaughtered right now by the power weapons. Yeah, right, the, the cap that Instinct just got is kind of the, the ability of them to just dominate the other team's base. You can hear Legit talking about it in his pregame interview. They just don't want this Instinct team to start rolling. But right now, they're starting to dominate. Oh. Yeah, it's not looking good for Straight Ripping. They started off strong, but Instinct looks like they took about a minute 45 to warm up. Now they are clicking. They already have one cap, the second flag running in the hands of Lunchbox. Ogre 2 and Roy, both with snipers, both incredible slayers on this squad. Instinct's making it look easy. Two caps in five minutes. Just an absolutely impressive play from this Instinct squad already. Legit, or Broy and Ogre 2 just dominating the base with snipers. Ogre 2 is on a killing spree, about to run this last flag. Just impressive play. Just dominating at the straight ripping base. This is exactly what straight ripping could not have happened. They can't afford to let these instinct slayers just running around their base, picking up their own sniper rifle. This game needs to, they, straight ripping needs to start getting back in this game. They need to start charging this instinct base. I'm impressed by T squared here, guys. He just cleaned up two. Got another assist there. Now he's gonna grab the sniper rifle. So let's see if the man with straight ripping tattooed on his bicep can help his team push forward. Someone on this straight ripping team needs to start picking up a big headshot just because right now, after you've been absolutely pummeled for about six minutes, you need some sort of momentum. So you need a big headshot, you need a big LTMR. I'm just looking for someone to make that spark for this team. 
We got two down here for straight. Ryan Newman nated the only two members alive, and Instinct still inside the straight ribbon base. That's over two once again, grabbing the flag. He's gonna jump right over T Square Z. Nice back smack by Tom, and now Tom is gonna push into Bonfire. Roy with the Rockets. T Square putting three shots on him, dropping his shield. It looks like Ryan Newman and Nated are gonna be able to finish off the kill while Legit sits in the Bonfire. So straight ripping. Although they're unable to push out of their base, they are doing a pretty decent job of playing defense here in the sixth minute of the game. And that was a key play right there, taking down Roy with those Rockets. I'm not exactly sure if Roy thought he had some help coming from behind him, and that's why he charged. But right now, Stray Ribbon, you said, is in a good position to kind of make a push of their own. T-squared pushing out, grabbing the sniper rifle once again. He hit Roy there once in the body. Nice shot. You see Rockets in the hands of Nated. Rocket coming flying across the map. Ryan Noob, that's a really good Noob. He has the sniper as well. He will be flanking on the rock. Straight Ripon has all four lives. They started to swarm, but we always see a member of Instinct sneak out, and that time they came behind T-squared to break the flank. Yeah, Lunchbox doing an incredible job of literally saw a guy and instead of shooting him, decided to sneak around knowing full well that he needed to get behind it if his team wanted any shot of getting control back. T-squared still doing damage over in Courtyard. There's the double trying to stay alive while Nated is going to be running the flag on the opposite side of the map. He's got Roy on his side of the map, so it's going to be Nated trying to run the flag and attack. Ryan Noob coming all the way from his opponent's flag back to ring two to help out, and T-squared is coming off the spawn. They're in position to make a move on this flag, but they got to pick up a few free kills, and it's not going to happen. I thought they were in a great position to pick up some kills on Instinct, and Straight Ripping just didn't capitalize. Straight Ripping almost seems timid to make big pushes on this Instinct squad. They're already at your base, Straight Ripping. You got to make a move. Someone get a little bit ballsy. But they know as soon as they make that move, if they screw up and they all four go down, that's just going to give Instinct a full control of their base, and that's something they know they can't come back from. Yeah, that would be game over basically at this point. They're already down two to zero. T Squared taking all kinds of fire, waiting for that sniper. But I have been impressed by Straight Ripper's ability to actually pick up their sniper when it comes up. However, it never seems like they're able to stay alive after picking it up. Now that's because this Instinct Squad does such a good job at narrowing down on the sniper because the sniper is the power weapon, so if you keep it out of the other team's hands, wow, nice body shot, then you have a better chance of winning. And right now, t squares in a good position. If he can get into ring two, get some body shots, and wait for his teammates to push in, they have a good chance at coming back. It's got to be frustrating right now for Stray Rip, and they're in their own, they know that Instinct's in their base right now, they can't really guard their own side of the map, and because they know that Instinct's in their base, they won't want to push up all the way, knowing a counter cap could definitely happen. Talking to Stray Rippin after the last LAN, I was telling, talking to him about his frustrations in the last season. Didn't even get invited to the national championship with his team straight. Instead, he had to go and coach status quo, which he took all the way to second place. But Tom said during the offseason, he found a way to relax, and that is through yoga. Tom is actually going to yoga very frequently before all of the events. He says it helps calm his nerves, stay focused, and it gets his body prepped for tournament competitions. And so far, I've seen a much happier T-squared during this season. Well, that's a big thing. I'm, this is their careers, and you have to have an escape. It's just like a hobby. This gaming isn't a hobby for them. They have to find something else. So a lot of the players work out. Some of them do other things. But I mean, if he found his place in yoga, then that's what I think most people need to find is a hobby. Well, in a lot of professional sports, yoga is used for, and a lot of them use yoga to calm the mind. It's almost been proven that you'd be able to calm yourself and kind of center yourself by doing yoga. I think it's, it's an advantage T-squared actually has over a lot of players. Right now, you got Tom sitting over at his sniper lunchbox, have the Rockets. Nice shots from T-Squared, dropping the shield from Lunchbox, but Roy, his teammate, was there to take out Tom on the flank. Meanwhile, Ryan Noob, Legit, and Nated all try to play defense as Instinct comes in. Legit's gonna pick up a clutch kill. Ryan Noob, the only one able to stay alive. Now he had the sniper, and now it's gonna be up to T2 and Nated coming off the spawn to stop this push from Instinct. They are looking so strong, though, with the sniper in the hands of Roy. Yeah, this is just almost gonna be a flawless cap. They got a great spawn. Oh my goodness, straight ripping spawning at their sniper hut because Ryan Noob stayed alive over there. Great job by putting a positive influence on that spawn. 
great play by a really good noob. Now that one may have saved the game here for straight ripping C squared over on the car bike. Great headshot, getting the player jumping down. That was Roy who had the sniper, so sniper's down for instinct, and now straight ripping pushing in very aggressively. You saw one player pushing in with the jetpack. Ryan Noob has the sniper, and legit is on the instinct sniper hut. But what we talked about before, Pistola able to sneak out right now for instinct. He's gonna be coming behind. He's a Ryan Noob with that sniper taking him down. Pistola almost single-handedly disrupting this push right here from Instinct. And now Stray Ribbon's got to be scared. Stray Ribbon knows that they're going to be, or Instinct's going to be charging pretty soon. 19.05 left on the clock. Remember, here in MLG World, we go to a 15-minute regulation time. If the score is all tied up, we will continue in sudden death overtime. But right now, you have Instinct with a 2-0 lead. They're just one flag away from ending this one here on Sanctuary. T squared and Ryan Noob are going to be pushing over courtyard side. T2 is going to go up to the hut while they send Ryan Noob low. Legit's going to get killed by I got your pistol. But meanwhile, T2 staying alive, doing a nice job pushing jetpack, putting heavy shots on Ogre 2, but he needs some more help, guys. Straight Rippin is not going to be able to get a cap unless they start winning these individual battles. And, and the player who I'm looking at since I'm watching the Straight Rippin squad is Naded. He looks lost in this series. I've yet to see him get a good sniper shot. I've yet to see him help out his team in any way. He's running around ring one. Finally, he's on the other side of the base, but he's running back to his rocks. He can't find his place in this game, and he really needs to step it up. But naden has got the ability to all of a sudden turn on that switch and completely dominate a game. But Stray Ripon's going to need him to do that if they want any chance in this series. D2 is able to trade kills after shooting. A decent rocket, but it looks like his teammate after picking up is going to be taken down as well. Nated is finally going to be the Street Ribbon member to pick up the rockets for the third time. And as soon as he touches it, Roy snipes him in the face. So the rockets look cursed here in ring two. Pistola's going to touch him, and finally someone's going to get away with him. Great play by Pistola, knowing the rockets were down and knowing that they need to control those, not allow Straight Ripon to try to get a good push and possibly tie or get a flag cat. But Pistola has absolutely been destroying. The player on Instinct, though, Roy, literally unstoppable this game. It's never surprising to hear Roy dominating. He's just, last year in 2010 season, it was between him and Pistola MVP every single at the end of the year. Well, I, I know most of the, the viewers haven't been able to watch Roy's screen, but I've been almost stuck on his screen. He's literally been five-shotting anything that moves. And we apologize, guys. Right now, we have to stay on T-squared. We are fixing our switcher. Hopefully, we'll have it back up and running for you next game as we want to show you all eight players because we are seeing some lights out halo here on the main stage. T-squared doing a great job right now putting shots on players in ring one. We have all four members of Straight Alive. Just as I say that, though, I Got Your Pistol is going to take down Naded. But we have Straight Ripping once again playing aggressively, and T-squared's going to get cleaned up. Just when it looks like they have some momentum, someone from Instinct steps up and gets a huge play. That time it was Pistola with another double kill. That's just exactly what we expected from Instinct. I'm very impressed with this straight ripping spot. Even though they're down right now in this game, the way they started and the potential they have, if they just could get some big plays, just one every minute, they'd have the ability to get a cap, I believe. The beginning of the game, I think, kind of put straight in the hole. Instinct comes out in games so strong all the time. If Stray Ribbon was able to hold off the early push from Instinct, I feel like it would be 0-0 right now. They've been playing amazing in the second half of this game. Legit and Ryan knew we're doing a great job double teaming someone in the rocks, but they were both hit by the same plasma grenade and taken down for another double kill from I Got Your Pistola. T squared and Nated are coming off the spawn over in their court. You saw one snipe from Roy went through Nated's brain and hit T squared in the body. Things are just working out for Pistola <laughs> and Roy. Yeah, this has got to be scary for Stray Rip and it was. Roy and Pistola both had snipers running around ring two. But luckily, a Stray Rip and right there taking out both of them. This is a good idea. This is a good push right here for straight. That was a big double kill, guys. This is going to free up some room. Ryan Noob has the flag through ring two. He gets it all the way back to his courtyard. He's going to be killed. T-squared unable to pick up a kill on the enemy's carbine, so you know the fire is coming from that direction. It's Ogre 2. Naded rallying the flag in, though. Straight rip and stop. Feet short of putting in this flag. Will they all sprint for it or will they go for slaying? It looks like Ryan Noob was almost getting the touch, but he got assassinated by Instinct as Instinct is now on the counter cap and legit was unable to get the flag cap. That is going to be the 15 minute mark. This game is over. Straight Rippin losing 0-2 in game one against Instinct. So 
giving a quick look at the stats. Plus seven for all four members of Instinct. Guys, we are going to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will have game two for you. It's going to be Team Slayer on Countdown. Welcome back. There you see the score. One instinct, zero straight ripping. It is time now for game number two. We're going into Team Slayer on Countdown. It looks like we're going to start this game off with a member from Instinct. And let's talk about what we saw for a little bit last game, guys. Straight ripping was taken to Instinct at the beginning of the game. But then Instinct really just took over, and we saw all four members go pop. Yeah, Instinct right there showing their real true slaying ability. All four members going positive. And Instinct loves to get out to these really early leads, Scott. It's really impressive to me, and then when they get these early leads, they don't ever seem to lose them. Well, this is their bet, one of their best game types in the five-team land, and they went six and one. Their only loss that happened to final ball, so they lost by one kill. This team looks incredibly impressive on it, and I'm surprised we haven't seen Pistola already hiding behind their base because that's his favorite thing to do in this map. Right now you are watching over two with the sniper. Remember, here in Team Slayer, we got rocket snipers and a camo to control. And Ogre 2 is just sitting so patiently up here in the vent. It looks like he's going to use his teammates to bait a little bit, made a little lunchbox. But uh, I think he's really just going to lock down this part of the map until his team is able to get the Rockets away from straight. That's exactly what he is. He's always been a setup sniper. He always likes to sit still, wait for them to come to him, line up a shot, and make the big shots count. And that's what separates him from a lot of other players. Roy, on the other hand, is definitely a run and gun, get ridiculous no scopes. But Ogre 2 has the consistency. Scott, who's the best setup sniper in the league right now? Oh, man, you're really going to put me on the spot like that. You were one of the greatest snipers of all time. I figured you would be one to judge them. Well, uh, I definitely like Roy. Roy's definitely very impressive with the sniper, but positioning-wise and consistency, oh, I have to give it to Enable. I really do. I have to give it to Enable. Chris, really you want to differ on that one? Oh, I mean, I, I've watched so many snipers. I honestly don't even know if I could, if I could name one. All those guys just so talented with it. All of them can catch fire at any moment. But I do like your pick of enable. This is what I like about this team. Notice how the sniper is controlling the vent and the other team's vent. And by doing that, if anyone comes up the vent, one, they can go for an easy no scope. But if they come up, nine times out of ten, they're going to be such low shields that all the sniper has to do is melee the guy. And it's an interesting strategy that Final Boss. Is, or, oh, God. Instinct is Five. running right here. And they're, they're controlling the top vents. And they're allowing Straight Ripping to go outside and then basically abusing the fact that they have to come in those small doors or port up to them. Basically giving themselves free kills. And those ports are really loud. They're going to know exactly when Straight Ripping actually does port up. Right now I am watching Nate and he has camo and the sniper, but he also has red health. So you can expect him to go for a health pack here pretty soon. And there he's able to stay alive as he's hit from a grenade, and Roy is just going to charge in and finish him off. I love that charge from Roy. All the power weapons now out of the hands of straight Rippin as Instinct continues to control. They're up 21 to 14 after three minutes. Nady just can't seem to get into a groove in this series. He went negative 11 last game, and he's not looking too good. Normally, the Nady were you. Oh my God! Roy! Run and gun. that's the end of my statement. All right, so, <laughs> Scott, though, let's get back to the Nathan conversation. You and I were both on AIM watching the LAN Network together online, and we were both watching Nathan scream. He was really the spark for the team when they were having success. And what was he doing differently? It looks like, to me, he's less confident in his shot. He's less confident, and he's playing a lot differently. But normally, he is in the other team's face, making situations happen, going for headshots. But in this game, it seems like he's trying to be very passive. It's like the nerves get to him. Remember when we were talking to Clutch before the event, and he said, I've never really had a hard time with Nated at an event, but at Lance, he always dominates us. So maybe he's just a land player now. In the history with some of the land players, Soviet, always thought to be a god at the lands, but as soon as he came to an event, maybe the pressure and nerves got to him a little bit. 
it seems that, like you're saying, Nate just doesn't seem comfortable right now. I don't know if he's just shot has just not been on yet this tournament, or whether now that he's playing instant, he's freaking out a little bit. Roy is playing like the native we saw at the land plant. So confident there, you saw him controlling the two last snipers using all that ammo, or as much ammo as he could, and he was doing most of it with no scopes, I saw, guys. Roy looked very confident going for the short range no scopes, but right now, it looks like Ogre 2 now is gonna be picking up that sniper. He switches for the DMR after getting the reload. This metal, he's gonna be beaten down, and Nated is gonna pick up that snipe. He just hit Pistol once in the body, but Instinct is just too strong. The Swarm once again taking out Nated up top. This is a 15, 14 kill game now. This is absolutely dominance. This is the only team we have put faith in that could beat this Instinct squad, and Instinct is handling them. Yeah, the, the teamwork right now from Instinct is just ridiculous. It almost feels that one guy is able to hold off at least two members of Straight Rippin and allow for his two teammates to come from behind, basically cleaning up, getting three kills on Straight Rippin. It's, it's so impressive. I know it's a little early to call it, guys, but I feel like I'm watching Final Boss at the 2007 National Championships when they didn't drop a game. Can Instinct be the team that does it next? Will they go all Columbus without losing a game? We said if they're going to lose anything, it's probably going to be a Team Slayer. But so far in this Team Slayer, Instinct looks phenomenal. I think that's why we mess up and we call FB or Instinct FB is because we always compare them to the 2007 final balls that didn't drop a game. Six. <laughs> All right, right now we got Lunchbox up here on the catwalk. 47 to 29. Excuse me, just three kills away is Instinct. Straight ripping, trying to make a late game comeback, though, but it's basically too late here. You're watching Lunchbox just lock down the rocket spawn here at sitting at garage door. Rocket spot, he's going to pick him up. He's got a kill up here, top of radio. Wasn't able to clean up the kill on Legit. Will Legit go for the rockets, or are they going to play it safe? They only have two deaths to work with here. Yeah, they're going to probably play it safe here. Taking out the Rocket guy now, but this game is pretty much over. 49 to 33, make it 50-33. Instinct continuing to impress here on the main stage. So calm, so cool after the game. Just sipping their water, hanging out. Plus 11, Roy, are you kidding oh. me? 14 and three, you saw that incredible run with the sniper. He was no scope and everything. No one win to poke out with that DMR and check out the assist from Lunchbox and Ogre 2. Instinct just really doing everything right here. Roy putting on an MVP performance here in Columbus, Ohio. And I think that's why Pistola and Roy sit next to each other so they can just feed off of one another and almost have like a friendly competition to see who can get more kills. Yeah, Roy, I've been watching his screen pretty much this entire time. He is absolutely destroying his shot. He's just on fire and Roy, when his shot's on fire, no one's gonna stop him. Okay, so there you saw the score. Instinct is up two to zero in the best of five. We'll straight rip and take a game from them. We'll find out after this. The Major League Gaming Pro Circuit is brought to you by Hot Pockets, NOS Energy Drink, the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play, and Stride Gum. There's a shot of the packed house here in Columbus, Ohio. Look at all those gorgeous Halo Reach fans. How many of you guys are Instinct fans out there? Do we have any straight ripping fans? A, a little bit, a little bit. I think that's about 70-30. <laughs> 90-10, whatever. God Squad <laughs> has fans here in the Midwest. We have seen an amazing tournament from them so far. They are now 11-0, trying to make it a perfect 12-0 through pool play as they take on Straight Rippin. Going into game three, we are headed to Assault on Sanctuary. This one is gonna be fun to watch. We got Rockets and Snipers. Who's gonna do the damage? Is it Roy? Is it Pistol? Launchbox or Ogre 2? I wanna get this one started with the little guy in the middle. As we start it up right now, it's Bomb on Sanctuary.
Here we go, it is game three. They're undefeated up to this point, but straight ripping the team wearing blue tonight was the only team to even put up a challenge at the lands before this event. Instinct trying to continue on that impressive performance we just saw in game two. They already have the rockets. Ogre two is gonna start off with on double kill, he got the rockets, and now Lunchbox is gonna carry those. All four dead for straight ripping in the first 15 seconds. This is the thing that's terrifying about Instinct is their communication. When all four of you die off the beginning and you hear an Ogre 2 and a Roy stream all four dead push, you know you get chills and you just know you're about to lose this first plan already. Pistola was jetpacking with those rockets, hit a player, he's gonna get a kill beyond the grave. And now we got T-Squared doing a nice job playing defense here, and we have three alive for straight ripping. That's the first time I've seen them out and slay Instinct in a long time. Yeah, and well right now, Chris, I've just been looking at the stats from the last five team land where Instinct and Shay Ribbon played. And Instinct went 10-0 in this game type, one of the only two game types. They didn't drop a single game at their land. You know, it's not looking good the way Instinct's playing right now. Scott, you're impressed though by what we're seeing from straight ripping. Yeah, that was, that was a very good play right there by T-Squared. I was, It was a questionable rocket, but a great job by the jetpack. But notice how the Astros play such an important role in the game that they can just hear the jetpack. If not, there's no way you could hear with the noise of this crowd. T-Squared getting a nice angle. Nice call on Astro, by the way. Astro, thanks so much for providing such awesome gaming gear for us here at MLG. T2 still jetpacking around, saw a player underneath them. Jetpacked right over top of him, and now it looks like it was probably Pistol who got away. The kid's so sneaky. But we have Stray Ripper doing a decent job of controlling the map here, guys. They're not letting Instinct into ring two. Yeah, but great. Oh, great play right there by Sherb. And the fact that they're not allowing Instinct to actually get control of their base after that initial push, you gotta love the resiliency from this veteran team. T squared using that sniper again as he takes down Lunchbox with the body shots, calls out Pistola. It looks like Legit and Ryan Noob trying to do some damage on that side of the map. Meanwhile, Nated is sitting there waiting on the bomb in ring one. Straight ripping though, doesn't seem to have any sense of urgency. Even when they get instinct on their heels, they're not pushing forward like they were before this event. And I have no idea why Nated is not able to finish kills, why he's waiting on the bomb. It's in their bait. Just push in and get it. Nated fighting players in ring two, just picked up a headshot. Now going after Roy, trying to help out Ryan. Can he get there in time? He gets the beat down. Meanwhile, it looks like we have legit and T score down. It's going to be Ryan Noob and Nated working as a duo here. Yeah, and I like what we see right here from Nated. We need, they, Straight Ribbon needs Nated to perform if they want any shot in this series. The last two games, he's looked pretty lost on the map, going about negative 18. And, but right here, playing well finally in the Sanctuary Bomb game. You know, guys, I would love to hear what is going on with Straight Ripping. Can we crank up our Astros and listen in with this blue team? Watch out here. Watch out here. Watch out the health pack. Watch out the health pack. Watch out the rocks, dude. Watch out the health pack. Watch out the health pack right now. Check every week. Watch out the health pack. 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 Shoot right now. Shoot door. Shoot door. Get out, say less. Sniping on the health yeah, yeah, right. 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 They're big rocks. Rocks, show me out of you. Rocks, show me out of you. And the big rocks. Rocks, show me out of rocks. Two shots of rocks. Our carbine, our carbine, Ryan. Ryan, I can't help. Sniper one, bring him. Oh, no. Our Right now, the sniper for the sniper. Right 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 oh my god! Oh my god. 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 Oh Stay alive, stay alive for a second. The flag, two guys, two guys looking at me in the flag. Two shot. Ring one, ring one, ring one. Ring one, ring one. Nice, they're all pushing now. What's your flag sniping actually? Jump back in three. Alright, let's shoot, let's shoot. They're going right now, they're going jump back. They're going, go in there, jump up, they're jump up. Three guys, three guys. 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 Three guys, three gu
squad just came up extremely clutch, clutch and always seemed to that last guy who was alive was able to stop the bomb and straight rip it just couldn't put enough pressure on this god squad yeah it was almost as if the last guy on instinct just kept spawning and just barely getting that uh, the bomb guy from straight ripping 
kind of basically keeping him away. And then as soon as Instinct got control of the Stray Ribbon base, it was pretty much over. Guaranteed plan. Remember, Stray Ribbon is trailing 2-0 to zero so far in this best of five series. They need this game to stay alive. I've been so impressed by what I've been seeing out of legit. Native looks like he's stepping up his game as well. But you can really hear the vocal leadership being stepped up here by T-Square during the Astro listening. And he's also improving his gameplay. He's on a killing spree. And that's what they're looking for. He is the veteran. He has been in this league just as long as Ogre 2. And he just knows what he's doing. But the person I'm impressed with is a really good noob. Yeah. He is stepping his game up. He is stepping up the communication. And he's trying to be the spark for his team. He's talking trash. He's making big plays. He's in the right positions. And we didn't show it to you. But in the last 30 seconds there, Straight Rippin was able to get a bomb plant. So now it's all tied up. One to one, straight ripping is back in this one, guys. And that is going to give them a bit of confidence here in game three. Let's see if they can feed off this momentum. Yeah, great play right there by the straight ripping squad. They grabbed the rockets. It ended up being the huge key for them in arming that bomb. The straight ripping just needs to keep pushing. They can't allow this instinct squad to get control of their base again. And Scott, or Chris, rather, you said this guy is the player to watch to run the objective here for straight ripping. A really good noob trying to take the sneaky route through the shotgun. Let's see if he can dodge the grenades that are definitely going to be coming from instinct any second. Looks like really good noob is going to leave the bomb there as bait, as legit, and here going to try and pinch in here on the. Str instinct sniper, excuse me. Go ahead, Scott. And it's just, they're all stepping up their shots individually. Legit is on a terror right now, and he is just winning every individual battle he's been in. He's doing a good job staying alive, just being a pest, and he's on a killing spree. The kid is playing well. He's not a kid. He's 21 years old. He's like three months younger than me, but that's besides the point. He's a grown-ass man. <laughs> right now, we got Legit on his birthday trying to do some work on the main stage. Genius, leave him up if we can. But on the other side, just want to make you guys aware, Ogre 2 is starting to heat up as well. He just got a triple and then a double kill. Let's see if Instinct is able to convert on this bomb plant or if Straight Ripple will have a strong defensive stand it, once again. It just seems that every time Straight Ripple starts to get in the base, someone on Instinct just goes off and just shuts down this entire Straight Ripple squad. That play you were talking about happened to be Ogre 2. I've seen Roy do it, I've seen Pistol do it. Now Straight Ripple's in a bit of trouble as Instinct's moving in with all of the power weapons. D-Square doing a nice job of dodging rockets over in the rock, staying alive. Pistola finally hunting him down with the second rocket, dodging sniper shots, now injuring players up top. It looks like that's Nated now hunting after Pistola. He's gonna chase him down. Let's get a screen over to either Ryan Noob, who has the sniper, or Nated. Nated actually just got his face ripped off there by Roy. Good choice, Genius, as we head over with the Noob. And the interesting thing about this Instinct squad is they like to push the bomb through the rock jump up and then just continue to push it up, which is completely unorthodox from every other team because every other team likes to bring it into the snipe hut and force the team to spawn rocks, but it seems that Instinct definitely prefers them spawning hut. They, they want the bomb to come in from the rock side. In their mind, it's probably easier to move it all the way to the base, but you'll see as soon as they get control of that rock side, they'll all sprint towards that sniper hut, try to control that, so when they arm, that the other team will be spawning in the rocks, and it's much easier to go oh. in there. Oh. Really good noob has been staying alive for about the last 90 seconds here, and he's been controlling the sniper for the most of it. Too late there to help out with the kill on I Got Your Pistol. His teammate's going to die. That is going to put them at a disadvantage for a bomb arm, but now it looks like Legit is going to finally make his way through the jump up. He's going to clean up that kill on a really good noob's killer, get the avenge, and Naden is going to be pushing in as well. But just like in CTF, here we go to 15 minutes in regulation time. When the score's tied up like it is now, we will continue into sudden death overtime after that 15 minute mark. It'll be interesting to see if we get into that point. You see T Squared is getting fired up. He's got a jet pack once again. When we get a chance, go to his screen. Nate is gonna be playing low, but T Squared is taking the high ground here. Yeah, and a very rare mistake we saw out of Instinct. Lunchbox grenading his twin brother Roy, essentially killing him and damaging another member of his team. Help lead to the straight rip in full control here. Great Rippin just unable to slay effectively enough. So you see the Instinct member staying alive. I don't know how Roy stayed alive so long. It took Nated way too long to help out with the spawners over in the rocks. And Roy is going to pick up a double kill and a fresh sniper after that. Roy is angry after his brother naded him. And this is what I'm talking about. When you have one member on the Instinct squad a one shot, if you don't finish him, he's going to make you pay for it. Roy was absolutely dominated there by a really good noob. 
no one cleans him up, and then he stops two people from arming the bomb. You have to kill him. One shots are the key right now in Halo Reach. If you allow one of the guy to get away, that's all it is. You, there's another member of the other team on the map alive, not allowing you to go near there. It's the it's a huge deal. A four on three, it's a much bigger deal. A three on three is so much more manageable. You see Instinct trying to make a move on that bomb, but T-Squared has picked up a sniper rifle and he has not missed his last four shots. He's had a double kill and two assists. Let's see how he plays this. Trying to hit another player sprinting over in the courtyard, just barely missing him. Going for the difficult headshot, but now he's getting knocked out of scope. But T-Squared really tends to step it up when it's super clutch moments like this, guys. Couldn't agree more. And here's an interesting thing. This is where you're going to notice what coaches are the better coaches in this, because after 15 minutes, it's very rare that these players have a more a match that goes past regulation, so they're not familiar with the times. Every other player knows it's like two minutes, but they don't want to do math into this. This is where the coaches need to step up. Exactly. It's a great point, Scott. Most of the players, the match is online only going 15 minutes. They've only got times. They're used to seeing the times of the 18 minute, the 20 minutes. They're not used to seeing the times go down to these levels, so they're not going to be sure when the weapons are coming up. Like you said, the coaches have become more important as the game goes on. Speaking of coaches, quick shout out to Coach Small. Not only is it Legit's birthday, it is also the coach's birthday as well. I'm checking out Nated right now. He just picked up a nice double kill to prevent an instant capture. Now straight Ripon trying to push that bomb bottom middle. You got T-Squared going to be moving it towards the rocks now. Three members of Straight Alive. Legit picking up another kill on the rocks. He and Nated are going to have to work as a duo, though, trying to force players back over from the opponent's carbine side. But instinct every single time straight looks like they're about to do something is shutting them down with just superior individual skill straight ripping just can't catch a break it legit found a random sniper laying on the ground everything was looking great and what happens he's got roy and over two swarming him there's no way you can get a shot off exactly straight ripping it almost looked like they had control of their own base but out of nowhere you've got roy coming through the shotgun tunnel and ogre two coming around the other side just to basically cause mayhem in the other in the straight ripping base. These guys gotta be the most frustrating team ever to play against. We are in sudden death overtime, so the next bomb will win. Not only does straight ripping want to get a bomb plant, but more importantly, they need to prevent any attack coming from this instinct squad. If instinct plants, their series is over, and straight ripping will head to the losers bracket as instinct will earn a spot in our winners bracket semifinals later on tonight. I just want to point out what Pistola had just done there, right there. Ryan, a really good noob had him dominated. So what does he do? He runs straight to the wall where really good noob has to move his aimer completely down, and now they have control. Bomb being moved in by I Got Your Pistola. 12.30 left on the clock. We're two minutes, 30 seconds into overtime. Over two is going to clear the way with some grenades taken out. Nated. The bomb is inside the straight ribbon base. Pistola is crouching on it. The grenades are too late, and Instinct is going to take this one. Three to zero over straight ribbon. They continue their unbeaten streak here in Columbus, Ohio. There you see great sportsmanship by all players. Straight Rippin definitely disappointed as Instinct continues to dominate our main stage. Taking a look at the stats, you see I got your Pistola, Roy, and Lunchbox all in the 30s as Pistola and Roy just continuing to impress us as they go positive once again. Guys, Instinct the real deal here. Yeah, I, I guess the question for the tournament will be, will any team take a game from them? Yeah, if it's gotten to that point, then it's pretty sad. I mean, this was Pool C, our pool of death. Straight ripping coming in, that series 3-0, both of them. They, Instinct just, again, just running over their competition. It, it, this is almost too impressive. All right, so there we go. You see Instinct is going to lock Pool C. They will advance to our winner's bracket semifinals where they'll most likely face off against final boss or the winner of Pool B. You guys can check that out. That's going down later on this evening. Guys, we're heading to a quick commercial break. Send me your tweets at MLG Pucket. I'll be interviewing Pistola after this. There you see the crowds here in Columbus, Ohio, the second stop of the MLG Pro Circuit Tour. 
Instinct just defeated Straight Rippin' 3-0. And now in the studio, I am joined by I Got Your Pistola, the most positive player from Dallas. And you already look like you're putting up some impressive numbers here in Columbus. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling really, really good. I just love my teammates so much. Like, I think Roy's playing the best on our team right now. He's going the most positive. But I just, I just love my team so much right now. I just, I just can't wait to play Final Boss. Now, you guys just went up against Straight Rippin. You are in the pool of death. Straight Rippin was the only team so far in all of the pre-tournament practice that gave you a run for your money. Were you nervous at all going up against them on the main stage? Well, yeah, you always have the pre-tournament jitters before every match. I, at least I do. And going into that series, I knew they were going to be a tough team. And uh, they're an incredible team. I, I, you should see them coming to loser's bracket. I expect them to place top three. And now uh, you guys actually defeated them in three pretty quick games here. They gave you a run for your money in game three, but the other two looked pretty dominant here from Instinct, especially game two. Walk me through each game, and, and what was it like playing against Trey Rippin? Well, the first game, we, uh, we were just getting really into it, and we just kind of just, I don't know, just we ran with it. That's basically what happened that game. But game two is where we really stepped it up. It was Countdown TS. I don't really know what happened, but we were just dominating. We were staying alive, sticking together, and we just almost got a steak. We call it an appetizer if it's that close. An appetizer. Yeah, an appetizer. And then game three, they, uh, they were putting up a good fight. Uh, we finally just stepped it up, finally got a 2-1 victory over them. And, uh, but it, it was amazing playing straight ripping. They're just a good team to play against. I've always liked the, you know, the name straight ripping. I, I just like that team. Now, Pistola, before the break, I asked our community members out there to send me some tweets. Are you ready for these? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's start it off with MLG Cave. He wants to know, Pistola, is the new Instinct roster the absolute best team you've ever been on, or does the three-win final boss still hold that spot? Well, right now, I think this might be the best team I've ever been on, but I can't really say that because, you know, we're only top six so far. But I'm going to go on a limb and say that we're going to win this tournament and that we're going to play amazing this whole season. I'm expecting a four-peat from this team. I honestly believe that this is the best team I have ever been on in my life. Sure looks like it so far. Now, I remember back when Ogre 2 and Ogre 1 joined up with Walsh and Killeran back in the Hill one days to form Team Domination. It feels like the second coming of Team Domination here. I got Trident22 who's asking, though, has your role changed at all as the main slayer from Final Boss now that you're teaming with Roy? Well, with this team, we can literally do everything. You can't overlook anybody. We have two wizards, we have a goat, we have a tank, and then we have the guy that's always there. Like, if you overlook Lunch, he's going to destroy you. He's going to play at the top of his game. If you overlook Roy and try to you know, take me out, Roy's going to be just playing great. Like, you can't overlook anybody on our team. You have to shut us all down. And what do Lunchbox and Ogre 2 bring to the team? Because it seems like in everyone's eyes that you and Roy are definitely the two favorite to watch. Well, Ogre 2 has always you know, been one of the best players in the game. He, he's definitely an objective slayer. I, he has like the most amazing nade placements I've ever seen. I was watching the last game when I was dying a lot because I was dying a lot. And I just kept watching his screen. I was like, he keeps throwing these perfect nades. How does he do this? So he's just an overall everything. Everything in the game, he's just amazing at it. On Lunchbox, on this team, he told me that he just likes to rush objective. Just go straight for the objective. Now, don't even think. Just hold forward straight to the objective. And me and Roy just clear up the map for them and just try to you know play our best. It definitely looked like you guys were blazing the way for them straight into the straight ripping base. Uh, Got to ask you though, who is the leader on this team? Is there one or do you guys all just work as a unit? We all work as a unit basically. We, uh, we all have all intelligent people who know the game in and out. If somebody says, yeah, we need to do this right, then someone says, yeah, yeah, we got to do this and this. And that's just like I step in and then Tom steps in and we all throw in our input and we find the perfect strategies to play, you know, put into our game. Final three questions here. This one coming from Undead Zombie. How far do you guys think the Instinct squad will go before losing a series in the tournament? Uh, I'm looking to win the whole tournament and not drop a game. That's not, the best way to look at it. No, I was going to ask my follow-up question, when are you going to lose a game? I don't plan on losing a game. Not going to happen? Tournament. I don't plan on it. All right, last two questions here. Lighthearted ones, which is your favorite weapon in Reach? And do you prefer the BR or the DMR? Well, my favorite weapon in Reach would have to be the DMR. I'll have to give the sniper to Roy, you know. He, he loves that sniper. But uh, my favorite would be the DMR. It's definitely improved from the BR. Because you can't just, you know, run around and four shot everybody. You actually got to think about your shot, think about what you're doing. You can't just, you know, run around and shoot. So I, I, I like the DMR a lot better than the BR. Final, final question from Real Goose. Will you take off the headset and give us a hair flip? 
All right, all right. Can I, should I do it? I'll do it. All right. It's back, ladies and gentlemen. That's Pistol. I'm Chris Puckett. Pistol, thank you so much for joining us, bud. Thank you so much for having me, man. Best of luck to you and the rest of Instinct. Coming up next, guys, we will have Impact taking on Swagger Like Us. We'll be back after this.